Hello, and welcome to another Make a Code Monday. My name is Max. I'm a programmer at the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library, and I have a project for the micro bit I want to share with you. It's a reaction timer game where when the game begins, they have a little heartbeat to get you ready, and then you have to press either the left or right button depending on which arrow shows up. And if you don't press it fast enough, of course, you lose a life or gain a point if you do press it quickly. When you lose all your lives, well, it's game over, of course. This is a game I think we've done in a previous video, but what makes it interesting today, I hope, is that we are going to explore Make Code's version of Python to recreate the game. All right, let's get started. And so, um, if you head to Make Code, Dot microbit dot org. You can load up the code editor for the microbit by starting a new project. I'm going to call this game just timer and hit create. When you load up a project in make code for microbit, you are brought to the block based editor where, of course, there's the microbit simulator, a center kind of toolbox with all your different um, functionality and code blocks. And then, of course, the composition space where you get to drag out your blocks and make your game. Um, for this project today, of course, the whole fun and point of it is we are going to click this drop down arrow and make our game in Python. Python is a written language where, as opposed to the block based editor, you have to type out all your commands and functions you know, in the language itself, in Python. Python is a very popular programming language, and so I'm very excited that there's a version of it here in make code and so the first thing we should do is you know let's start from real scratch get rid of everything and start making our game the core of the game of course is the fact that it's a reaction timer game images show on the screen and you have to press the corresponding button um, that aligns with the image depicted um, first though in the game there is that little kind of refresher where it would show you the little heartbeat just to kind of get you into the zone of the game and in any case that's a good way just to explore some of the syntax of the language here and so if you want to if you wanted to do things kind of quickly to get started when you open these drawers um, in the block based editor you see kind of the representation as blocks but here when you open for example the basic drawer in your toolbox it shows the written version of that code which you can still drag and drop and so if we wanted to for example show a heart icon we can click and drag show icon and plop that in our code and you know the written version of that code appears and so we can use that to, to begin to see how Python works and also uh, how Python works in the context of make code and to get started we see that um, you know, the basic namespace is being used. So that kind of class has a method called show icon. That's the action we want to take. We want to show an icon. And then what we want to show is in this enum type object at which we can then call for a certain member. And so the thing we want to show is the heart. And we access the heart to be able to show it on the screen by using the icon names object using the dot notation and then asking for a heart. This happens inside the show icon method which actually does the work of showing it onto the screen. And so with this one line of code, you know, we can press play in the simulator and there's a heart. Um, you know, just to show what happens when things go wrong, if we don't have that show icon there and just say icon names heart, well, nothing happens and that's on purpose. So we need, obviously, to call the method which is the action we're taking and then the action we're taking includes the icon name of heart. To show the small heart, we can type this one out just to see how that looks. So from the basic namespace, you want to show. And then you see here the um, kind of text completion or code completion shows up here. We can browse up and down this menu with the up and down arrows. And what we want to show is another icon. We don't want to show the heart that was loaded in there automatically. If I delete this back to that little 
period, I can press that and it should show me a list of potential icon names. And so I know what I want is the small heart, so SM small heart, which is great. And close that off. So the method, of course, begins and ends with a bracket. So now when we press play, we have a, you know, a version of a beating heart. To repeat that, we can use Python's built-in looping structures, which is great. We can say for the index of the numbers in a particular range from zero, so starting at zero and going all the way up to number two, we can do a certain action. So that for statement has to end with a colon and then everything that we want to run in that for loop has to be indented. Python is a white space significant language, meaning that where your code is indented and how much is indented really matters. If we want this code to run within our for loop, we have to indent it by one tab so that the interpreter knows that this code beneath the for loop belongs to that loop. And so now when we run our code, we have a little beating heart, just two heartbeats. And if we switch over to blocks, we can see what kind of the block paste equivalent would that, of that would be. And so here we notice anything that's just in our code and not in a other function just kind of winds up in on start. This is our for loop represented as the repeat two times do block. And then here are our two icons. Of course, if we change an icon here, you know, let's say maybe in our game, if we were going to do like, uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know, smiley face, sad face, and we switch back to Python, well, there we go. So there's icon names happy and icon names sad. And so that's the beginning of our game now, which is great. Um, in our game, we're going to do some fun things. We're going to choose an arrow to show on the screen and then have the player press a button that hopefully matches that arrow. And so to kind of build that out, we can store in a variable the different arrows so that, so that later on we can call those arrows or choose them randomly from a list. And so to get started with that, I'm going to create a variable. Variable assignment in Python is very easy. I can just type in the name of the thing that I want to be the variable name and then use the equal sign, which is the assignment operator and then give that variable something to be assigned it to. Here, things are kind of interesting. Earlier, you know, we just showed an icon, icon names happy. Now, I don't want to show it just yet. I want to put an arrow into a variable so that that can later on be shown um, in a different part of the program. And so instead of using the show icon method with the name of the thing I want to show, instead, I'm going to use the basic drawer just to get the name of the arrows I want to show. And so if I click this here, oops, and drag it in, we can't assign this to a variable. What we want to assign to the variable is just the arrow name and then the arrow direction. The arrow direction pointing to the left, from my view, would be west. And so we put arrow names west in the variable. And then later on, if we were gonna, if we did want to show that onto the screen, we just have to say basic show arrow and then the name of our variable. And so that's kind of the trick we're gonna use, you know, a few times throughout our program. So when I press play now, happy sad, happy sad, happy sad, basic show arrow left, which uses the image stored in the arrow names dot west object here. So that's great. So we need to do the same thing for the right arrow, which equals arrow names east. And then um, we want to choose one of those at random. And so I'm going to put these directions. So here I am just assigning another variable, except the variable I'm going to assign is going to be the type of list. In Python, lists are created just by using these square brackets. Whatever you put inside those square brackets will count as a list. My list will include the left arrow and the right arrow. So that somewhere along the line, later on in my code, I can, for example, choose one of those um, 
directions at random. In order to make this um, code easier to execute later, I'm actually going to just store the choice of my list in a variable so that I can pass it around a little easier. And so I'm going to choose one of those arrows. I'm going to create a variable called arrow choice. And that variable, and maybe this is where things get a little interesting, maybe a little funky. So I have a list here. I have a left and a right inside these square brackets. The items in a list are indexed starting at the number zero. So item zero in the list is left, item number one in the list is right. And so my arrow choice is going to be the item from my directions uh, list. And then I would usually call that item by using the square brackets again and manually you know, putting in a number. So arrow choice direction zero or one. If I was gonna show that, instead of assigning it a variable, you know, what I would do once again is basic dot show arrow and I would show, you know, for example, directions one. When I play that now, happy sad, happy sad, happy sad, and then it shows the right arrow. And of course if I did that for zero which show the left or west arrow. What I want to do is choose that number at random. And so if I go back in time a bit, just to go back to where I was assigning a variable, my arrow choice is gonna be something a little different. Under the math drawer, we have the option to pick a random integer. And so when I drag that out, I can place that inside these square brackets. Whoops, I'll copy and paste that inside these square brackets. And with the directions, uh, now I can have it assigned randomly to either the number zero or one, not 10. I, don't have, I do not have 10 options in my list, only zero or, zero or one options. And so then finally, just to test it out, I can again show arrow, and instead of showing items north, I can show my arrow choice, which will be either left or right. And so randomly, it'll choose this time the left arrow. Sure. Um, just to make sure it is choosing the, <laughs> the arrows correctly, we can say for index in range 100, So I'm only doing this just to you know, pick a bunch of random arrows. And if I was gonna call this 100 times, of course, I need to also choose a random number each different time. And so put that in the for loop. And so now when I press play, happy, sad, happy, sad, you know, random arrows. Could be right, could be left. It works, no errors happen. So now I know no matter what, if a random zero or a random one is picked, it's going to all work and pick a random arrow direction, which is great. So, you know, I don't need that really there. That was just for fun. What we are going to do, though, now is make some of this code repeatable, though, within our forever loop. Um, you know, on the, on the microbit in the make code editor, most of the action happens in a big old forever loop, which just kind of runs and runs and runs and, you know, gives our game its functionality. And so, you know, this time is no different. Under the basic drawer, I'm going to use the run code forever, which is the forever loop we want. In the Python version of the editor, it's kind of interesting, maybe a bit strange. And so here we have a function. Whatever we put in the function will run forever, not necessarily because it's in this function named on forever, but because um, the code editor automatically put in this basic dot forever on forever line. And so what that means is this object here is what is actually going to repeat the code by adding it to the scheduler. And what are we adding to the scheduler? The function we called on forever, which was chosen automatically for us, which I guess all makes sense on forever. But in the end, whatever we put in this function will run and run and run and run because it's been added to the scheduler in this line below. So we have to explicitly put that there. We can put probably any function in here 
as long as it's, you know, the function we're expecting to run forever. Functions in Python are defined with the def keyword, then the name of your function, two circle brackets. You could put arguments in there to enter your function, but I don't think you can do that with the forever loop because of the way it's being called here by the scheduler. But in any case, we have these two square, sorry, two circle brackets, the colon, and then the word pass here is just a placeholder. We're gonna add our functionality there, so we get to remove that. So we're calling some variable, sorry, we're assigning some variables here, and we actually need those variables um, you know, in our code here in the function, and we want to make sure we're using the global version of those variables. There might be a better way to do, to do this, but I think this is overall the easiest or shortest way to get this done. And so we need to bring these global variables into on forever. And again, I don't think you could put your arguments in here because of the way the on forever block runs here with the scheduler. So we're going to use the global keyword. And this just put all these kind of variables in here for us. We want um, to put in the arrow choice. And we also want, um, I guess that's it for now, because arrow choice kind of by default includes the direction list, which is all good. So for now, we want that global arrow choice variable. And so it's at the beginning of the, of the game, a choice is already made, which is perfect. So what we need to do is then show that choice in our forever block. We're going to show that choice on the screen, and then we're going to wait. We're going to add a basic dot pause for a certain number of time in milliseconds. The amount of time you put in there really does change how hard or easy the game is. If you put a really short amount of time, like 100 milliseconds, the player will have to move very quickly in order to press the correct button for now, or at least for testing let's say 600 milliseconds and then that's kind of it for now our game can't really do much more than that because we haven't added in added in our button presses but at the very least when you press play smiley face sad face smiley face sad face and then an arrow points to the left sure so to bring in our buttons we're going to add some more uh, input handlers under the input drawer we say we want to run code when a button is pressed. So we can drag that out and see how that syntax works again. So again, that block brings out a automatically kind of named and generated function, and then automatically adds that function to the scheduler. And so the on button pressed aspect of the scheduler is kind of constantly must be running in the background and checking to see what happens when you press button A, or if you're pressing button A, and then what to do when button A is pressed. And so again, whatever we put into this function will happen based on when the scheduler reads this input. What we want to do is kind of a funny thing, let's say. We're gonna keep track of what button you pressed and what image corresponds to that button. Because when you press a button, you're gonna be selecting an image and then the game will check to see if the image you selected is the same image that was randomly assigned. And so, you know, just like we've been doing, we're gonna make a variable called button. And I'm just gonna give that zero as a value because we're going to assign to it an image later on. And so when we're pressing that A button, we need to make use of the global variable button and also the global variable in the case of the A button, the A button when the micro bit is facing you is on the left. And so we want that left variable from earlier and the button that we created in on start. And so we don't want to pass here. Instead, we want to just do a real simple assignment. All we want to do is assign, reassign the variable button to be the contents of the left variable because left is the west arrow. And so if that west arrow is chosen by our arrow choice variable, 
then we know that we should you know get a point or at least not you know have a penalty because we if that's the case we would have chosen the correct direction and so we can say then um, what now happens when we press the B button and so kind of a same old story under the input drawer run run code on button button pressed instead though of course we're going to change that to B Oop. B so these names have to match because it's calling that certain function name and then the button B is the corresponds directly to the hardware that is you know on the microbit so button B kind of the same old story we want to access those global variables of button and in this case right because When the player presses the B button, that means that button should equal the image that shows up on the right. So now, in our forever loop, we can ask a really simple question. We can say, if the button that we pressed equals the arrow that was chosen, well, let's use the game namespace under the advanced drawer and change score by one. We want to add a point. It seems to always just put it one line lower for some reason. So we delete that empty line. So we game add score by one. And then in Python, if you need um, an alternate result, so if button doesn't equal arrow choice, well then else, otherwise, then you know under the game drawer, we can say, remove life and we want to remove one life so that means then just really quick up here at the top of our code we should say game dot set life two three so you have three lives lives and then if you press the correct button you add a point and else you press the wrong button you lose a point and then just to make sure our game could go on and on forever well, then just once again, we need to just um, call a new arrow choice because the arrow choice will be constantly updated as time goes on. Oops, we want that to run as far left to the, as we can. If we did that one indentation to the right, that code would have only run if the else block was active. So we want that to go in line with the main kind of indentation level of our function. And then, of course, we need to reset our button. If the button didn't get reset here, well, then whatever button you press last would always kind of be there until you press another button, which could mean unintentionally the player gets something right or wrong by simply not pressing a button at all. And so just reset that back to zero, let's say. So, oh, but before I go too far further, now that we have our button variable, we also need to bring that global variable into here or else we would always just be using the local version of the variable. And so, you know, just make sure that's there. And now when we go to play our game, test it out. Ooh, perfect. So that's the animation that shows up when you get a point. So I'm pressing it fast enough and doing great in this game. I've got to press that right arrow, left arrow. And then if I press no arrow, I lose a life, lose a life, and then you know get game over if I lose all three lives and so that's it that's basically the game um, I would say that some parts of using Python in MakeCode are a bit trickier just based on the way that um, like the input handling is done with the scheduler and needing that little bit of extra code here and there but for the most part it's you know it's it's Python it's a pretty easy to read language um, just to run down our game top to bottom one more time so we show happy sad uh, faces twice. We assign to the left variable the west facing arrow. The right variable gets the east facing arrow. We put those two different directions into a variable, which includes a list, because then we can choose from that list using the kind of square brackets here and choosing a random integer from zero to one or zero or one. The button right now is set up just to have nothing pressed on it right now, and then we're given three lives in the game.
when you press the A button, we use our global button and left variables, and then assign to the button variable the fact that the player pressed left. Same thing for B, except when the player presses the B button, we assign the um, right arrow to the button variable, so that later on, when the game shows your arrow choice, and after a brief pause, if the button, which again, the button must be, based on what the player pressed, either um, the image facing left or the image facing right, if that equals what was chosen earlier, which again was either the left or right facing arrow, if those two things are equal to each other using this two equal sign comparison operator, that means the player played well. They, played, they picked the correct one fast enough, and so they get a score. They get one point. If in the event that the button the player selected did not, does not equal the randomly selected arrow choice, well then else they lose a life. At the end of that process, we choose an arrow again, and then reset the button so that the player has to press a new button again. Um, if that seems a little confusing, and it might, you can always click over to the blocks view. Um, when you do that, sometimes the Python code um, will work the same, but it might not look the same if you go back and forth between blocks and Python. So we'll go over to blocks just once and see how it all looks there. And yeah, there's our code, more or less as intended. Again, not to go you know over everything again, but here you can see that you know on start, choose our faces, set the left variable, to the west facing arrow, right to the east facing arrow. We put a list of our directions into a list called directions, choose that randomly, you know, and so on and so on and so on. And so, um, you know, I hope you take on the challenge to try to create a game in Make Code's version of Python, and then, of course, I hope you share this, or hope you share whatever you make with us. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.